be reading today from my newly published book by Cyber Wit in India, uh, Bamboo in the Sun, Poems of Japan, resulting from a year's stay, a full year's stay, teaching at Osaka University on exchange, and then going back again uh, two years later on a lecture tour to Japan, giving me the opportunity to visit and explore many of the sites, many of the temples, many of the palaces of uh, Japan. I'll start today with Himeji-jo, which means the Palace of the White Heron. And it has a tragic story about the wife of one of the emperors or shoguns of, of Himeji-jo, Kiku. So I call this Kiku of Himeji-jo. As we walk along stone walls with leafless cherry trees, a rainy Himeji rises white in fog and mist with gray flowered tiles glistening like tear-stained cheeks of legendary Kiku, mourning the imagined loss of a 10th earthen dish, which he thought she broke but didn't and was sentenced to death for her imaginary carelessness. How Himeji's dark and wooden walls must have closed in on beautiful and tearful Kiku. But when heaven itself comes to earth during the season of cherry blossoms, Himeji Jo will float in fragrance like a great white heron bearing Kiku's spirit to paradise. As I mentioned, temples were of major interest to me, and one being the temple, the Buddhist temple of Riwanji in Kyoto. And this was a poem I wrote about the garden, the rock garden of Riwanji Dera. Yellow earthen wall envelops crushed white stone raked in waves by lone Buddhist monk around mossy rocks jutting high into human consciousness. But the longer one stares, the farther he falls through the stones into a deep abyss of pure spirit, which may at first frighten him if he should think this world is made of solid substance, of yellow earthen wall with crushed white stone and jutting mossy rocks make it seem to be. Another poem I'd like to read is theater, Japanese theater, uh, Bunraku Theater, which Osaka is famous for. And Bunraku, a puppet manager, uh, controls a, a two-thirds life-size puppet and this particular play we went to was uh, a tragic love between those uh, two lovers who should not have fallen in love. And the poem is Bunraku's Invisible Chord. As lovers meet for the last time before they commit suicide deep in the woods, audience, chanters, musicians, and Bunraku operators all become one in mind and spirit as operators' faces truly express the soul of their puppets through their eyes, showing the feelings of two lovers who are about to die. So do the hearts of the audience, chanters, and musicians become one, pulled by a strong, invisible cord. And one last one, a sampling of this book, Bamboo in the Sun, Poems of Japan, is Bamboo in the Sun. Bamboo in the Sun gently sway up and down Kyoto Mountain, slopes like soft green feathers on a strutting peacock. Thank you, and uh, hope you enjoyed the book later. Thank you.